the Samuel Alito flags outside his home stories over the last few days have brought forward a really important question that we need to talk about. Do you realize what happens to the Supreme Court if Donald Trump wins in November? And I know that I'm sort of risking sounding like me from 2016, like this again. Do I need to ask you, do you realize what happens to the Supreme Court if Donald Trump wins and thus what happens to this country? Because just like in 2016, I see too many of my brothers and sisters on the left who don't seem to realize what's at stake. So let's go back a little bit. Donald Trump got three Supreme Court nominations, all successfully confirmed to the Supreme Court last time he was president. And it worked to do some disastrous things, just like we predicted. It led to the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which has now thrown the country into bodily autonomy and reproductive chaos, plus a bunch of other disastrous things. This is not the only terrible thing that the Supreme Court did, thanks to becoming a MAGA Supreme Court as a result of Trump being the president. If Trump wins in November, he probably gets two more Supreme Court picks. If Trump wins and Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito realize, hey, we can retire, we're pretty old, we can retire and Trump will replace us with young right wingers, which he said he would do. He recently said at a rally, we're going to pick young judges and justices. We know what the plan is. He's telling us what the plan is. Any common sense thinking person realizes what the plan is. If they realize that uh, Thomas and Alito, they will retire and that will make it so that Trump will have chosen five of the nine Supreme Court justices, fifty five point five five five. OK, you get it. Fifty six percent of the Supreme Court will be chosen by Trump. He will pick young justices for the two that he gets. And then look at the ages of the folks on the court that Trump selected. Amy Covid Barrett is only 52 years old. Neil Gorsuch is only 56 years old. Brett Kavanaugh, the oldest of the three that Trump selected, is 59 years old. So if Trump picks people in their mid to late 40s or their early 50s, you will have five Trump picks on the MAGA court, none older than I, I guess at the end of Trump's term, if he wins at the end of Trump's term, Brett Kavanaugh would be 63 or so. 63 is the oldest of the five MAGA picks at the end of Trump's next term. That is Trump control of the Supreme Court for decades, for decades in the following term. So we'll have the 2028 election. During that term, none of these MAGA folks are likely to retire from the court in the term after that. So now we're talking about the 2032 election, which means you're president from 33 to 37. So we're up to 2037 now. Kavanaugh at that point, at the end of the 2032 term, which is 2037, Kavanaugh would only be 72 years old then. Clarence Thomas is in his 80s. OK, so the oldest of the current Trump picks could be around through the 2028 election, through the 2032 election, 2036, 2040. He will finally be 75 in 2044. He will be 79. And this is only the oldest one. And even in 2044, he would still be younger than Clarence Thomas is now. That's the oldest of the five picks that Trump will have made at that point. Trump will be long gone in heaven, Baruch Hashem, depending on what you think, where you think Trump is going. Statistically, Trump will be long gone and the court will still be MAGA. So this is not theoretical. And for those who say, yeah, but David, when, when is the, when did we see something? We saw it in 2016. I told you there are dangerous. I, I wasn't using the term false prophets because I'm not religious, but so those who are more religious might say there were false prophets. There were some dangerous false prophets claiming to be on the left, whether they were really on the left. I don't know. Saying Hillary and Trump are two sides of the same coin. We'd have Roe v. Wade right now if Hillary had won in 2016. It's, we don't we don't even need to go beyond that. We would have Roe v. Wade right now if Hillary Clinton had won in 2016. So for everyone who's thinking about toying around with a third party. Maybe I'll stay home. Oh, I like Jill Stein who hangs out with Putin or oh, I like RFK or MAGA Supreme Court till 2050 is what you need to be thinking about.
Now, am I shaming anyone? No, this is I know the con scroll down if you're on YouTube. I know the comments will say, David, shaming people into voting is never going to work. I'm not shaming anyone. I'm saying just understand the stakes. OK, is Joe Biden the perfect candidate? No. If you said to me, hey, David, do you want an 82 year old guy who's been around for 50 years running as the nominee in a vacuum? I would say, no, that's not what I want. But do I recognize what's at stake here? And do I feel comfortable taking an action? It could be the action of staying home. It could be the action of writing in whoever. It could be the action of voting for Trump to really show him how upset. Am I morally comfortable taking an action that could lead to a MAGA Supreme Court till 2050? I'm not. Now, that's my morality and my ethics. It would be wrong to impose it on you. So I'm not. What I'm telling you is we shouldn't delude ourselves about what's at stake here. We said it about Supreme Court 2016. Hillary lost. And this is where we are. Three picks for Trump. It, it's just math. OK, Alito and Thomas likely to retire. Trump will have picked five ninths of the Supreme Court. If you're comfortable with that because you feel Joe Biden isn't progressive enough, despite being on paper, the most progressive presidency, certainly in my lifetime, probably in 100 years. Well, then you do you and you say, yeah, I am comfortable with that. I'm comfortable putting Trump back in because I don't think Biden is progressive enough or I don't like how Biden has handled Israel Gaza because I don't think he is concerned enough with the lives of Palestinians. Well, if you've heard what Trump has said, then Trump would be even less concerned. The harm reduction choice is Biden. Well, what about RFK? Have you heard what RFK has said about the Israeli Gaza conflict? RFK is also not going to be your guy if that's your main issue. So however you slice and dice it, everybody should do whatever they want. I'm not going to shame anybody. But if you call me on the day where Trump gets his fifth Supreme Court pick confirmed, I'm going to ask you, do you feel good about how you voted, given how it worked out? And then people will have to decide for themselves how they feel about their actions. So MAGA Supreme Court 2050, that's what I would keep in mind. One of our sponsors today is Tycos, which provides an awesome free weekly five minute video series about the economy called The Weekly Comment. And it's hosted by Richard Vague. I've always found Richard Vague to be a premier economic expert. He's the former secretary of banking and securities for Pennsylvania. And every week, Richard is covering economic topics that keep you up to date, really looking at the key economic issues of our time, U.S. debt, income inequality, forecasts for the American economy, economic challenges that are facing Europe and China, innovative policy ideas. Richard is the author of economic bestsellers, including A Brief History of Doom, The Case for a Debt Jubilee, and his newest book, The Paradox of Debt, which is a really interesting look at how government deficit spending in the U.S. during the pandemic era mostly benefited the top 10 percent. The six trillion dollars in government deficit spending in the U.S. in the nearly three main pandemic years increased household wealth by thirty one trillion dollars. That's the paradox of debt, according to Richard Vague. And in his weekly video series from Tycos called The Weekly Comment, Richard is excellent at taking really complicated economic issues and making them accessible to anyone. Go sign up for free. The link is down below.